is up, YouTube? It is Dap or ZDAP or however you guys know me. And I wanted to let you know, unfortunately, I don't think there's going to be a stream today. So I thought I'd upload this video. And if there is a stream, it won't be later till tonight, till like midnight or like 11 p.m. Central Time. Um, other than that, let's just get right into this video on Detroit's gang war. The Cash Gang versus the Band Gang, which kind of sound like the same thing. Let's get into it. Detroit has always been one of the wildest cities in the country, but now, with new hot rappers popping off in the area, fans are learning about the war going on in the city with the <coughs> Cash Gang and Band Gang. Let's take a closer look at one of the craziest beefs going down in the D. Band Gang is a crew of rappers who grew up together on the blocks of Strathmore and Mark Twain on the west side of Detroit. They're not a huge group, but they're known for being scammers and putting their work in the streets. There are six members of the Band Gang in total, Band Gang Lonnie, Maso, Javar, Biggs, Paid Will, and Jizzle P. They're known for tracks right, like Band Jizzle Gang P. or No Gang and First 48. Band Gang is also affiliated with another group in Detroit called Shred Gang because they grew up in the same area and both had the same ops. But they are two separate groups who happen to rock with each other and often collab on music. They both beef with Cash Gang, who is also known as FWC, a crew that has beef with basically the entire city, including 700, 9000, Block Boys, and of course, Band Gang. The most well-known member of Cash Gang is FWC Big Key, who has earned himself the nickname Big Op for being one of the most hated dudes in the city. Other members okay. of Cash Gang include Cash Gang Lil Head, FWC Lick, Moore, Mike, and Styx. Although the two crews were never cool, they weren't always at war. But as both groups grew a name for themselves in the streets and in the industry, attention built that would lead to an all-out war. The incident that pushed the beef between these two rival crews past the point of no return was the killing of well-known Detroit rapper named Dex Osama. Dex was one of the most feared savages in Detroit at the time he was killed. He was not part of either Cash Gang or Band Gang, but was affiliated with another group called Choppa Boys. He was one of the hottest up-and-coming rappers from Detroit in the early 2010s. His career really started to take off around 2013 and earned him a deal <coughs> with Meek Mill's Dream Chasers label. Many thought he'd be the next rapper from the D to blow up on the mainstream level and put the city back on the map. But Dex wasn't known just for his music. He was also famous in Detroit for the work he put in on the streets. And when your name gets that big, you're bound to make a few enemies along the way. Dex ended up getting into it with Band Gang after this one of their fallen brothers, Band Gang Dada, aka Two Dots, who was killed in the alley back in 2015. Dada got... So he didn't, let me get this right, let me get this right, let me get this right. He didn't have beef with, but no, he did have beef with other gangs. But for some reason, he decided to diss this dead dude. Why? You know that's going to incite more beef. I don't want, so this whole war was started because this dude dissed this dead guy. Which he didn't even really need to diss. Got into a fight with a man named Denzel Talbert, who ended up gunning him down. A rapper from Shred Gang named Shred Gang Mo broke down what happened to Dada in an interview with DJ Small's Eyes. How did he pass away? He got killed. He got shot. He says that they were chilling on the block, and one of their homies pulled up and asked if anyone wanted to go downtown. Mo says that he had a bad feeling about it, but they all went anyway. Because I, I felt it. I'm like, no, we ain't going. But we end up still going, so... That's the only regret I really got. Besides that, I'm live with the punches. They ended up crossing paths with Denzel Talbert and his crew and got into a fight. It's not clear what the fight was over, but the word on the streets is that Dada tried to snatch Talbert's Cartier bus, so Talbert ran him down and killed him. Others say it was the other way around. But either way, two band gang members ended up getting shot, including Dada, who was killed. Dada was one of the founding members of Band Gang and a beloved member of the group. They mentioned Dada in many of their songs, like Dada's Winning by Band Gang Paid Will. Dex Osama had already been beefing with Band Gang and Shred Gang, okay. and it's rumored that they had been in the shootout where his AK was shot out of his hand. After Dada was killed, Dex started using his death as a way to seek revenge on his ops by dissing their dead homie. Okay. Dex would drop a track called Jack Bush featuring Rocaine, where he spits the bar right around town one chopper. Two blocks hit him in his head, call him two dots. The disrespect of Dada didn't sit right with Band Gang, and it quickly escalated the beef between them. Band Gang and Shred Gang would start yeah, dissing Dex in their own music and on social media. Then, on September 7, 2015, Dex Osama was shot and killed outside the Crazy Horse Strip Club in Detroit. Two people have been shot, one of them fatally outside the Crazy Horse Strip Club. We are told that this started as an argument over a woman. 
Dex's girl was a dancer there, and he had gone to see her. He got into an argument with some other dudes who were trying to dance with her, and the situation escalated into gunfire. Dex would be shot and stumble to a gas station to call for help. But the ambulance didn't arrive in time, and he would later die in the hospital. Damn. The shooting was caught on surveillance, and the video shows Dex firing a shot off into the air before the fight broke out. The two men who were arrested for killing Dex Osama, Otis Davis, and Dietrich Odoms were allegedly affiliated with Cash Gang and Shred Gang. Although Dex had his own crew, Chopper Boys, he was cool with FWC Big Key from Cash Gang. The murder of Dex Osama was what started the war that still continues to this day. It made it worse after members of Bang Gang continued to diss Dex on tracks after he was murdered. So, Big Key felt like he had to defend his dead homie. Damn, bro. So, I mean, it's another story of people just dissing dead ops and then, or not dead ops, people just dissing, yeah, dead ops. And then, and then the circle continues. The circle just fucking continues. It's crazy, man. It's crazy. <laughs> The two gangs started going at it both on social media and in the music. But in 2019, Key went through some legal problems after he was found guilty of two counts of forgery and possession of criminal tools. He ended up avoiding jail time and got sentenced to four years of probation. But before he could get back into the war, he would end up catching another charge later that same year for felony fraud. Somehow, he escaped jail time again and posted bond the next day. But just as Cash Gang was celebrating their leader being back home on the streets, Bang Gang would be mourning the loss of another one of their most respected members, Jizzle P. Aaron Mays, better known as Jizzle P, was shot and killed last night while sitting in a car on Detroit's west side. On September 23rd, 2020, Jizzle P would be brutally murdered right in front of his own mom. Jizzle P and another dude were sitting in a Chrysler 300 on Fielding Street when a shooter sprayed the car with bullets. The car was parked in the driveway of Jizzle P's mom's house, and she witnessed the whole thing. But she said that the killer let off so many shots that the sparks blinded her from seeing who did it. 25-year-old Aaron Mays was sitting in a car, the two of them cracking jokes. When someone ran up, firing so many shots at Mays, his mother says she couldn't see the suspect's face. There was so much muzzle flash from the gun. She would go on the news to mourn the death of her son and Bang Gang without a secret revenge on whoever took their homie from him. But Cash Gang didn't have much respect for the death of one of their ops, and pretty soon after the news broke, they would be on social media dissing the dead rapper. Big Key was the first to start the wild disrespect, laughing at Jizzle P's death on Insta Live, saying that he was getting an AR to smoke more ops. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> Yeah! Whoa. Man, I'm finna go pick up my mother. Hey, y'all, I done got too many death threats. The rest of Cash Gang will follow his lead and clown the rapper on social media and take credit for the murder. It must have been a planned hit against Bang Gang because Javar later revealed that he got shot on the same day at the same time and Jizzle P in a different location but survived. You know, that shit was, was really crazy because we got shot on the same day, like at the same time. So he was in the hospital recovering when he got the news that his homie had been killed. If that wasn't bad enough, while they were still recovering from the loss of Jizzle P, the group would lose another member, Bang Gang Paid Will. In late 2020, police responded to several shots being fired in the area of Grandmont in West Chicago. They would enter one of the homes in the area and find Bang Gang Paid Will dead from a headshot after what appeared to be some kind of shootout. His death came just a few months after Jizzle P was murdered, which meant back-to-back -back losses for Bang Gang. Yeah, Although crazy. not widely reported by official media outlets, members of the group would take to Twitter and IG to report the loss of their homie. They also lost a lesser-known member named Bang Gang Lenny Skinny around the same time because both Jabbar and Lonnie shot in the mountain RIP tweets. So the group was losing members left and right That's all within wild. a few months. If that wasn't bad enough, their ops would continue to taunt them on social media by clowning their dead homies any chance they could get. I think it said Cash Gang got six bodies this week. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> bro, chill out, bro. Y'all niggas around. It's tripping. But all the violence would attract the attention of police, and in early March 2021, Big Key would have his house raided by the feds. The FBI obtained a warrant to raid his apartment Jeez. from a judge in Detroit under the suspicion that he had guns and ammo stored there, which would be a violation of his parole. Big Key and his girl were at home when the feds showed up, and the search uncovered a Taurus G3 9mm pistol and a necklace that said Big Key. The feds were able to use the necklace to connect the rapper to his IG account, where he could be seen rocking the chain and sharing all kinds of incriminating evidence of the various crimes he was involved in. It seems like this time, Key was finally caught, although they gave him bail, which he quickly posted and returned to distant ops and continuing his many beefs. 
he would get into it with Bang Gang Jabbar on IG, and Cash Gang Lick would end up dropping a diss track called Wet Jumper, where he dissed all the dead members of Bang Gang. The beef would get even more serious after Bang Gang would almost lose another one of his founding members, Bang Gang Lonnie, who was shot in the head, but survived. He would post pics on social media of himself in the hospital, collecting tons of cash, showing ops that he wasn't scared of their assassination attempt. This would lead to even more beef online after Cash Gang Lick and Lil Head would take the bait and start dissing Lonnie under his post. This brought up some old photos that revealed Lick was once part of Bang Gang, but switched sides and started beefing with his former friends. If this is true, it would be a bad look for Cash Gang, but it's possible that the photo is just a troll and could be photoshopped. Either way, it doesn't seem like the beef between these two crews will be dying down anytime soon. Bang Gang has lost most of its founding members, and Big Key will likely have to face charges for getting caught with the weapon while on probation. It seems like this is just another tragic story of two rap crews who won't stop beefing until everyone is either dead or in jail. But once blood has been shed and dead homies have been disrespected, it's only a matter of time before someone gets revenge. If you thought this video was crazy, be sure to check out- I did think this video was crazy, and I thought this video was very informative. I did not know about Detroit's gang war. Um, if you guys didn't either, make sure you drop a like, comment, and subscribe. You guys know the drill. Um, if you have any other videos you want me to react to, make sure you comment below, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.